So this is the kit that we are using for the transmission line. I got this on Amazon. This stuff is rated for fuel, oil, coolant, everything except for E85. So if you're running flex fuel, I don't think you can run this stuff. Um, there's probably an alternative out there. Um, but this one did say in the description, not for E85. Um, for transmission, it'll work fine. There is a bunch of AN fittings, 180s, 90s, 45s, and straights. And then you find it here. We have these little fittings that will screw into the transmission. Um, the transmission, a lot of people mess this up from what I was reading because these are quarter inch, but they're straight, they're not tapered. So it's not a national pipe thread, but if you put the tapered fittings in there, you will likely crack the transmission case. The bottom down here is a straight cut with a washer to seal it. Um, I'll probably also put some sort of a Teflon sealant on here, whether it be liquid or tape. And then on the other end here, it is a AN fitting, and that's what we will attach the hose to. And then let me grab the fittings that go into the radiator. So normally you would use a line nut like this, run your 5 16 or 3 8 line into that, put a inverted flare or double flare on there, and then you can thread that into the transmission. Instead, I picked up these AN fitting adapters. They are, I believe, a half inch by 20 thread pitch, and they will seal in there. They have a tapered seat, and then I can hook the transmission line right up to here. I'll probably put thread sealant on these as well, just to prevent leaks, but it shouldn't be an issue if everything was machined properly. Um, it's hard to say because they were fairly cheap and you just never know what you're getting. You got a little liquid Teflon on there. Thread those in. They don't have to be super tight. You don't want to damage the uh, radiator. Now we can go back to the transmission, pull the fittings out of it, and put the new fittings similar to this into the transmission. So these are the two fittings in the transmission. Um, these fittings are not push to connect. They're a jiffy tight fitting. It's very similar, but a little bit different. So a 19 millimeter socket, um, since we're not forming lines, we don't have to worry about that. We're just taking those out. 19 millimeter socket. Should take those out. So to save some time on camera, I uh, fabbed up these two ends here with a 90 and a 90. Um, I also got these little clamps to hold the hose off of Amazon. They were pretty cheap. I got four of them, but I think I might need a few more. I didn't order a bunch of them because I wasn't sure if I was going to use them or not or how well they would work. Um, I may order four more of them. I'm not sure. So I got those hooked up. I'm going to drop it down below the radiator hose over here to the frame rail, kind of out of the way. And then we're gonna head back behind the engine mount and along the side of the block. So I'll finish routing this stuff after I get the other ends on. Because we, right here I got battery cables I need to reposition. Those are gonna go behind that motor mount with the battery cables. So it looks like it's pretty close to the exhaust right now. But from up top it looks like I have a little more clearance where we can see a little better. There's about two inches of room there. I mean, the starter's right there as well. So I don't think it'll be too big of a deal. There's plenty of airflow around it. So we're gonna come across here and then I'm gonna mark where this hose needs to be cut and we will put the other ends on here. I think I'm gonna use a 45 on this end, but I'm gonna test fit a 45 on the transmission before we do that. So I, since I had these ends already on there, I ran this down along the engine block where I needed it. I cut these off with a little bit extra just so I can uh, 
you know, if I can't get it on there the first time and I start fraying the ends here, I can cut it again. There are several ways people do. Some people tape them up and cut them with a uh, hacksaw blade or a die grinder or a chop saw. Um, the way that we've done it is pretty easy. Let me grab my cutters. These, I don't know if we got these at Harbor Freight or just the hardware store. Um, they're Pitts Pittsburgh, so I think that's a Harbor Freight brand. But these are a cable cutter and we just stick the hose in there and cut it and it leaves almost no frays at all. Let me uh, show you guys here. This is after cutting it with those cable cutters. Um, the nylon coating is fraying just a little bit, but the wires are not. And still that's a pretty good cut. Don't mind the messy workbench. It's how it normally is. I clean it off uh, every once in a while. So now that we're ready to put our line into these fittings, um, what you do is you, you spin off the bottom part of the nut here. We're gonna take the fitting off, save, save that for later. I have a set of these aluminum jaws. Um, they have a magnetic back. They just kind of rest in there, but we're gonna stick this piece in there. And these have uh, cutouts in it that will lock down on those and it won't let it turn. It won't mar it up very much. I mean, I, I got some gouges in here, so it might leave some small marks. But I'm just gonna clamp that in the side here. And what I ended up finding is I'm gonna have to run a 90 degree fitting on both of those um, transmission lines on the radiator side and the transmission side. So luckily I bought two of these kits. I bought one for the fuel system, one for the transmission system. So I had to rob the other 90 degree pieces out of the other kit. Now, when I did the other side, one of them went in nice and easy. The other one I fought a little bit. So what we have to do is we have to get this hose pushed into this fitting about that far until it bottoms out in the fitting. And then we'll thread this in there. Oops. Now there is some threads cut in here, but they are left-hand threads. In the instructions, it says to turn this clockwise. Um, it didn't seem to make a difference which way I was turning it. It was difficult to get in there. Um, what I found is if I just squish the end of this a little bit and then spray a little bit of WD-40 in there, that's how I had the best luck. I'm just gonna shove this in there and twist it a little bit. That's why I like to leave a little extra. So if you don't get it right the first time, you can snip the end off and start fresh. This is a little more difficult since I have the hoses tied together. I think it's going in there. <clears throat> Let's see if I can show you guys down in there. Okay, you can see that that hose is bottomed out up against the bottom of the fitting. Now we're gonna thread the other piece into that. In the instructions that came with the kit, it recommended clamping this fitting into the vise and then threading that into it. That seems like more work than clamping the line and everything into the vise and threading this into it. So I'm going to spray a little bit of WD-40 on here. Um, any type of oil will probably work fine. Just making sure that this taper that's on the end of this fitting will go down into the hose. Sometimes you gotta center that hose in there because when you push it up against the top, it might move a little bit. So get it started. And these are very fine threads, so try not to cross thread them. And this fitting is fairly stiff because it's new. Um, so I'm just turning this and it's starting to uh, spin on me. Now they make special wrenches for this that are uh, aluminum. They're not supposed to mark it. Um, I'm just gonna use a crescent wrench that has smooth jaws. You don't wanna use like my snap-on ones here because they have serrated teeth in here. 
Um, these work really good for removing bolts and hardware, but that'll really mar up this surface. So I have this Craftsman one that has smooth jaws. I'm just going to put it on there, tighten it up. Even if I were to scratch these, you can't see these underneath the vehicle. So it's not a big deal. Okay, so that is tight. That should be pretty good. It shouldn't leak. Um, I'm Since this is kind of stiff, I'm just gonna spray a little bit of oil in there, um, some more WD-40, make the assembly process a little easier. Um, there's an O-ring in here that seals it. But it must be pretty dry after being through shipping. Hopefully they don't leak. But now that that's lubed up, it'll be easier to get it positioned in the correct orientation to hook up to that transmission. So I'm gonna do this fitting to the other hose and then we'll put this in the vehicle. Okay, I got it hooked up to the radiator. Um, I haven't tied it to the frame at all yet. I may have to reposition stuff a little bit, but it goes underneath the motor mount. Up over the starter, I'll still have to figure out a way to tie it up next to the block so it doesn't ever fall onto the exhaust because if it falls on the exhaust, it's gonna burn and rupture through. But it should sit right up there. I'll just have to build a bracket to keep it over in that position. And then it loops down next to the pan. There's one of the old holes right there for the heat shield that was on the side of the transmission. Um, I'll probably put a coated clamp on there to hold at least one of the lines. And then I'll put another one of those little aluminum brackets that holds the two lines together right next to that coated clamp to keep everything put together. And then I tied them onto the transmission, tightened them down. That way at least I won't have transmission fluid leaking every time I push this thing in and out. That's it for the most part. I've got the transmission lines hooked up to the radiator. Um, I shouldn't have to do much else other than to build a support bracket for that. Those little anodized clamps, they kind of tidy up those lines real nice. Um, they're super cheap on Amazon. I think the hose was around 50 bucks for 25 feet and 10 fittings, and those clamps for four of them was around 10 bucks. Um, I looked at it from my local parts store and it was about double the money um, because the hose alone was I think 70, and then each fitting that I would have needed was around six to $12. So saved a bunch of money by going on Amazon, um, purchasing the whole kit with 10 fittings. Now, depending on what I need for the fuel line, since I robbed those two extra 90s off of there, um, I may have to go on Amazon and get a couple more. I may just go to the parts store and get those two fittings. I'll put links to all, both those kits down below, the, uh, the braided line kit and those little clamps, as well as links to those fittings that I put in the radiator and the ones in the transmission. If you guys have any questions or comments, put those down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see the rest of the build, subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.